Hey, what's up guys, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about how to make epic sounding brass. And this is going to be a very basic tutorial, which is going to help some of you, but I believe that um, some of you also will have uh, already this kind of knowledge. So yeah, check out the track here and see for yourself if this tutorial can help you or not. Playing in 3, 2, 1. Pretty basic and let's talk about you know uh, how to get that sorry how to get that type of sound if you um, you know uh, brass the brass section is actually a quite advanced you know um, or rather it can get quite advanced as a subject and I do not have the time to talk about it you know that advanced way today and I also did not honestly delve into it that much because I never had to in my compositions. So uh, it's something I still need to study myself, but if you ask yourself how you can get your brass to sound as huge as it did here, um, let's talk about how you can get to that you know, sound and what you might be doing wrong and what might be you know, uh, um, standing in the way of you um, getting to get that brass sound. So there are a few mistakes you know, beginners make when it comes to brass. And those are the same that prevent their brass to sound as big. So um, I'm going to talk about them and talk to you about why they're bad and how they so how to solve it. Solve them, sorry. So first thing, the first mistake beginners tend to make is they tend to think, wow, the French horn is such a powerful instrument, it's the best instrument in the whole orchestra. So I'm going to write a brass section and I'm only going to use French horn because they are the best and they do not need anything else. Oh yeah, so let's check out why, you know, why the French horns alone are not enough. So let's check out what this track would sound if I isolated the French horn in the brass section so that I put all, like, so that they will be only the only instruments playing. So I isolated them, let's play it out. Yeah, it kind of lost its power, didn't it? So uh, the reason why it did lose its power Sorry, the, the reason why the French horn did lose their power is this. So, um, as first thing, I need to tell you that the French horn is, yeah, the, the most loved, you know, brass instrument because it's versatile. It can, you know, go to lower, you know, uh, notes or higher notes or even higher, I guess. Okay, but the thing is that, you know, the French horn is, you know, it, for what I've noticed, um, is the best kind of instrument if you have to play, you know, a simple but effective melody like this one, because um, it has such a clear um, and evenly distributed, you know, frequency spectrum that, you know, it cuts through your mix and soars on top of everything really effectively because it has that clear and distinctive sound. So um, it's indeed the best pick if you need to write a melody in your brass section, but it is not enough because look at the frequency spectrum here. Sorry, let's look at the frequency spectrum of the French horns. It's quite, you know, precise and almost slim, so um, it doesn't sound, you know, uh, that full because, as I mentioned in other videos, if you want something to sound full, you need to make sure it's, it's really. Um, like this frequency uh, signal is really broad in the whole, you know, spectrum. So uh, what this kind of instrument needs to sound huge is a layer of instrument, a layer from an instrument that uh, is different from him. So the bass trombone is an instrument in the brass section, which is the lowest along with the chimbasi that will help with it because this is what a bass trombone sounds like. As you can see, the, the frequency spectrum of the bass trombone is, mu is much, you know, much more complete and much more cluttered. And this is 
the reason why the bass trombone is not always the best idea, um, or rather the best pick uh, when you have to write a melody, you know? I usually do not write my melodies on bass trombones, but to play, you know, your chord, your chord progression's root notes, it's the best because it clutters your mix in such a way that gives, you know, that body that the French horn needs to play the melody, on, you know, uh, in a really effective way way. So let's check out the bass trombone and the French horn together now. Now we're talking, you know, now the spectrum of the frequencies is full and, you know, um, the, the brass section sounds alive and big because, you know, it has that foundation which is given by the bass trombones and that, you know, perfectly pristine and clearly sounding melody on top of it, so it sounds amazing. And then on top of that, um, or rather below that, if you noticed in the spectrum of the frequencies, we had signal from here onwards, but you know, on the really uh, low parts of the frequencies, like on the really low uh, frequencies, sorry, there was almost no information. So. What you can do here to make this sound even better is to layer, you know, the brass section with an instrument out with an instrument outside the brass section, which goes to play into these frequencies or focuses into these frequencies. So that instrument is, uh, you know, there are many actually, but the instrument I tend to use, which is probably the only um, orchestral instrument that goes as low, it goes as low is. Um, the double bass. So the double bass is a string instrument and it's the lowest of the string family and alone it sounds like this. As you can see like I, I put it at really low volume but um, it plays in th those you know in that frequency range which the brass does not reach. So when we layer it uh, with the, the brass section it sounds like this. It's really subtle, but now it's much more full. So that is how I got this huge sound. But that is only one of the tips I have for you. The second tip is, um, or rather, the se yeah, the second tip is uh, know, um, a word of caution against another of the mistakes people make when they're beginners. So beginners tend to assume, you know, or rather tend to forget that brass is, you know, brass instruments are played by blowing inside of them. And those who blow inside of them are human beings who, you know, as a race do not have infinite uh, breathing capabilities. We need to catch a breath when, you know, when we play that instrument because, um, it's impossible to blow in a brass instrument infinitely without, you know, getting rid of all the air inside your lungs. So when brass players play their instrument, they do take pauses, even if really, you know, slim and hardly noticeably, noticeable, they do. So let's check out how the brass would sound if I did not input those pauses. You know, it sounds still quite good because the library is good, but does it sound realistic? No, definitely not. So, I, the thing I did, or rather, the thing this melody does is, you know, this uh, melody, which is from Final, Final Fantasy, by the way. Uh, I always speak Final Fantasy stuff because I believe it's the best, you know, uh, uh, kind of music um, to learn this quite this kind of, you know, genre of music, I guess. But yeah, this melody is intelligent for brass because it has it has these pauses here and the pauses are great not only because they emulate you know they simulate on uh, a human brass player but also because um contrast, you know, they create that contrast between the silence and the next brass note and that is huge, you know. A way to make um or rather a thing to keep in mind to make a sound sound huge is that it's not only the presence of said sound in your track 
that you know makes it sound big but it's also the absence of the sound you know so um this melody sounds effective because it, ha it has these pauses and these pauses are basically uh the absence of the french horn and when the next note strikes it sounds even bigger because it's then compared with that you know uh slight moment of silence you had before it did hit you know so um having pauses in your melody with brass instruments is huge because yes it allows you you know the brass instrument to sound more realistic and it creates that sense of contrast between the silence and the next note which is going to be played from the brass instrument so uh those two points are really important and that's the reason i put those pauses here and uh uh what did i want to say yeah the pauses you like you want the pauses but do not make them too big because otherwise they will sound like as if they were you know a mistake from the brass players you know brass players do need to breathe but they do it ever so slightly and really in a really fast way so that you know the they their melody lines and their playing sounds you know doesn't sound off so make them breathe you know even if it's a computer treat it as if it was a human being you know playing so let it breathe and create those pauses at very you know um key moments so another thing to keep in mind is you know tied to this one which is uh the third mistake like this is the second mistake but the third mistake which is tied to the second one is again uh brass players blow into the instruments and um the way they blow is variable you know so say for example here we have this brass you know we have this bass trombone notes which are really long the thing here is that um to make them more realistic i used i rather i draw i drew curve curves for the mod wheel and the expression which are midi control commands that are present or rather they are relevant on every type of orchestral library actually and um, in this library the mod wheel in, uh, determines how hard um, the brass player is blowing into his instrument and the expression determines how loud the instrument sounds so what i did is i drew some curves on the expression and some steps for the mod wheel and these steps are basically telling the brass instrument here go a little bit loud here contain yourself go a little bit louder here and here go as loud as you can so this helps again to create the sense of contrast so let's say let's check for example um say if i lowered it even more let's check how it will sound compared to this instead so this is quite calm but this much more powerful and when you have this kind of variable steps or variable you know intensity of of blowing inside your instrument uh, not only the performance sounds more realistic but also you know um you create again that sense of contrast between one note and the other because if you know the note before was um contained and the one after is super loud it's going to sound even more loud so that is that is good and another thing i did is to uh, you know draw some curves for the expression so that um when you know these notes keep going on for quite a long time when they're close to being finished they get their expression a little bit more you know uh low so what happens here is what i'm trying to create here is um uh, a brass player that blows strongly into his you know instrument at the beginning of the note but keeps you know going lower and lower to preserve his breathing for the next note which is going to come after uh so that he can blows sorry so that he can blow um strongly at the beginning of the next note as well so it's a really subtle you know uh curves like it's not too steep but the the thinking behind it is that so those are things you need to keep in mind you know you need to keep the breathing of the brass player variable inside your instrument by you know drawing curves for the expression and the modulation wheel 
so that it sounds as if you know the, the, um, the player was blowing stronger in some parts to create interesting accents and l blowing a little bit uh, uh, softer in other parts to um, rest his breath or to create you know those those absences of brass um, to have you know more power when the loudest notes hit so yeah uh, that's about it and a last thing that I had to mention or rather the fourth mistake which I had to mention first I do not I do not know why I did not is uh, when you're writing melodies for your brass section you should only write you know melodies like this one articulated melodies like this one for um, the higher you know the higher register brass instrument so I would not uh, use you know the same this same French horn melody in the bass trombones because as I showed you before the bass trombones have a really cluttered frequency response you know so when you write a melody like this what will happen is that it would clutter your mix with a lot of unwanted frequencies instruments like the bass trombones that play at lower frequencies are key to play you know chord progression but it's most especially bass root notes of the chord progression and you should make them play single notes like do not make them play chords because again um, if we were to play a chord with with this bass trombone let's let's see if i can for example So we have this chord here. Let's play it. Eh, it kind of sucked, but uh, that's not the point. The point is that you know, since the notes are are so clutter cluttered with frequencies, when you mix them together. It's not that clear. It creates a lot of, you know, um, unwanted um, sonorities, if that's a word in English. But yeah, so the thing I do is with lower notes and lower register instruments, I only trigger, you know, single notes rather than triggering chords. If I have to trigger a chord, I will trigger it on, you know, higher notes. Because higher notes are clearer, so they're less cluttered compared to as you can see here in the spectrum so yeah if you have to write melodies do it on high notes like like i did in here and with instruments that shine on those high notes so french horn is perfect and uh, if you have to instead write chord progression and you know root notes etc i suggest bass trombones french horns are great as well because great as well because they are versatile but but they're not as menacing as this because they shine on the higher register so know your registers and know you know when to use a melody and when to use a chord or when to use you know a single root note and um yeah that that's it for the tutorial of the day i guess and i hope you learned something because you know this was really basic stuff or at least it is to me i sometimes you know i've been making music for a while but so sometimes the things i give for granted and and consider basic might not be basic at all but i believe the things i talk about today are quite basic so yeah i i hope they still uh brought some knowledge to you and uh yeah if you have any questions about this the things i showed you today or um i don't know yeah questions relevant to this video let me know and i do my best to answer in the comments below by the way if you're new here check out the rest of the channel if you want to learn how to write orchestral music because there are quite a lot of tutorials and i'm keeping on making this because i'm learning how to make orchestral music myself i'm a professional trailer composer but the, the music i make for trailer companies is much more electronic but I'm delving into orchestras now because I, that's the sound the sound I would like, you know, to have. Electronic meets orchestral. So I'm studying, you know, this kind of music. And 
what I discover, I explain it to you guys on this channel. So if you want to learn to write orchestral music, learn with me and subscribe because I'm going to make a lot of tutorials um, to take you on this journey along with me. By the way, if these tutorials are not enough for you and you're interested in growing even faster and, uh, you know, and if you have, you know, very subjective questions and about your music career or your music skills, I do offer private mentoring on Patreon in form of, in form of you know, private lessons and feedback and supervision on your music. So um, definitely check out my Patreon page if you're interested in that stuff. I also uh, upload my uh, project files, or rather, you know, um, instrument stems on Patreon. So if you want to analyze my tracks instrument by instrument, you can do so if you support me on Patreon because there, that is the place where I upload my song stats. So, uh, yeah, if you want to learn more, check out my Patreon. That's it for today. Alex out.